Hello and welcome back to the Oxbridge Formula. Today I'm here with Alex who is a student at Magdalen College. So would you like to tell me a little bit about yourself Alex? Yeah so I'm a second um, year natural sciences student. Um, <clears throat> I'm at Magdalen College. Um, I'm the JCR access officer at Magdalen as well so I get involved in a bunch of like accessy kind of things and like reaching out to like city school students and that kind of thing. Cool. So I guess we can start off with the access thing. Um, what sort of initiatives does Magdalen have in place to encourage state school students to apply to Magdalen? Yeah, absolutely. So there's there's quite a few. So Magdalen's linked with North Wales and Merseyside. And so our school's liaison officer heads down there quite often. Um, Magdalen's actually residential um, for students that are from the link areas. Um, they run two residentials. One's a Magdalen residential for North Wales and Merseyside. Um, the other's HE Plus just for Merseyside people. And basically you just come to Cambridge and get a feel for the kind of life here. So like a mix of some of the academics and some of the social kind of things, um, some things led by students, some things led by the teachers essentially. So there's a lot of stuff going on in Magdalen and like we're very open to essentially just people interested in the college or like interested in applying to Cambridge, just basically getting in touch with us and like we can organise like a, a call or something or like people coming up to um, the college itself um, once COVID is done, sadly. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that, there is a lot of stuff going on. Um, Maudlin's quite tied in with the SARA network. Um, so uh, SARA network's an outreach scheme in Wales um, and we run a lot of events through that as well. Yeah, and I just want to say that um, the Maudlin residential like to do with Sarah is how me and Alex actually met um, and now we both ended up at Oxbridge so it clearly does work. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've, it's actually quite funny because um, because I've gotten involved in a lot of access stuff like I've seen quite a few people come through the residential as well like um, like there, there's a few people who I, kn I know that have like come to Cambridge from actually doing the uh, residential and like obviously with Oxford as well. Um, it's, it's, it's quite nice how like it gives you a real good feel for the place I think. Yeah, definitely. And would you say that's the main reason or like how you chose Magdalen? So, yes and no. Like, I think, I think that like the fact that I was really familiar with Magdalen helped. Um, but like, so Magdalen's kind of like, it's pretty much exactly the kind of college, college that I want. Um, <clears throat> it's like kind of medium to small size. Um, so like you can get to know everyone, but don't feel like everyone knows you, if that makes sense. Um, and then like on top of that like it's it's a really beautiful place and like we've got a load of the river which is quite nice like the room i'm in at the moment like is literally right on the river it's mad um yeah i think the main reason that i chose Magdalen was just the community atmosphere i think um like everyone's kind of like a family if that makes sense um and like we go really strong on um college family vibes so in, in oxbridge there's um there's kind of like uh, you, you get like college families, so like you're assigned parents um, that like do your subject and that kind of thing. Um, and Magdalen, we go like whole hog and have like an entire family, like with brothers and sisters and everything. It's it's really nice and quite a wholesome a wholesome atmosphere. Yeah, that sounds really really nice, and I like the college family idea of having like brothers and sisters as well. That's like really cute, and I guess it extends your family, and it's like a really nice thing to do. Um, so, what would you say the overall um, atmosphere and reputation is of Magdalen? So I think I think the biggest thing that you get from anyone who's at Magdalen is the community feel. Um, like I think that like the, the college like talks a lot about like inclusivity and that that is like a really strong feel. Like nobody really feels out of place at Magdalen. Um, I mean, obviously I can't speak for everyone, but like it, it is a very welcoming atmosphere and like there, there's just a lot of there, there's a lot of talk, like. A discussion and uh, a lot of like feeling like you belong I think. And what do you reckon there's anything in particular that Magdalen do to sort of create that atmosphere and environment? Yeah it's, it's actually kind of interesting I think that the way that we do um, college families and try and introduce people is like one of the strong strong um, reasons like thinking about it like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of commun communication between years um, and like obviously within years obviously and that kind of thing um, but like we we definitely try and like we try and enforce the the kind of thing that like everyone here's at Magdalen and we're, we're basically one big family um, 
not to get too sappy, but. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. No, that's really, really good. Um, and I also read the like accommodation model and a lot of it, even some freshers accommodation is mixed with other years. And do you reckon that also helps with the like um, interior friendships and things? Yeah, for sure. So Maudlin's actually um, doesn't have much like fresher exclusive accommodation. There's only like two main areas where it's just freshers. Um, and like even then they kind of become like a little community in and of themselves, if you know what I mean. Um, so like, for example, there there's um, Basing House, which is essentially just like opposite the river of the college, um, still like technically on site. And like the the group there like always tends to be like one big family and then kind of like invo invite people in and that kind of thing. Um, but like, yeah, across the college, like, for example, in my first year, um, I lived with like a few freshers, a few second years and a few third years. And it, it just meant that I got to know everyone quite well. Um, and like, I think one, one of the big things that like, I think that um, Maudlin does well is that this kind of like, there isn't really year boundaries. Like, you, you can be friends with someone in like the year above or below you and it's not weird, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's really important because... Like, it's great to have, like, your friends within your year, but it's, it, it can be intimidating if you, you're not, like, good friends with people in the year above and things, you know. Like, you might not want to go into the library because the cool old years are there. So, yeah, I think it's really important to have that community atmosphere in college and to feel like a family, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm intrigued to hear about um, your first and second year accommodation and, like, how it differs and what the process of picking it is and things, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'll start on like the, the ballot um, and the things like picking accommodation. So Maudlin, um, I think it does have a really, a really like fair way of doing it. Um, so the way that it works is um, in first year, you basically say, I kind of need this kind of room, that this is what I'm after. Um, or like if you don't have a preference or that kind of thing, that doesn't matter. They'll just stick you in somewhere. Um, and like um, if, if you've got any like requirements or that kind of thing, you can make that known. Um, quite early on um, and so essentially like at the like part way through um, first year you're put into basically like a randomized ballot so literally your name's pulled out of a hat um, just like a computer hat <laughs> um, and yeah so essentially you come out in a random order and like that's the order you get to pick your rooms um, and then the following year that order reverses um, there's there's a couple of reasons why you might be pulled out of the ballot. Um, so like that could be under like medical reservations. So for example, you need a room with certain requirements. Um, but like <clears throat> you, you can also have, um, because some of the rooms in college are really old. If you're like over six foot, they aren't that suitable for you. No uh, so you can actually get pulled out of the ballot for that reason as well. No way, that's insane. Well, I'd definitely be okay in the room, so wouldn't I? Five foot one <laughs> me, I'd have loads of room. It'd be fine. <laughs> So what's your first year room like? Um, so my first year room was really nice. Um, it was in Edwards Court, which is like one of the newest parts of Maudlin. Um, so I think Cripps Court itself was built in 2004. So that's like the newest and like fanciest accommodation. It's where our buttery is, so like where we eat and everything. Um, and so Edwards Court is kind of like a little offshoot of that that was, I think, built slightly later on. Um, it was like an ensuite room with a really nice like court view um and like yeah it, it just it had really nice vibes i think it took me a little while to kind of make it quite homely but i think that was the transition into the uni itself but like it, it was really modern um and yeah it, it just had a lot of space um and like part way through the year i just got given a double bed because why not <laughs> it's it's actually mad um so um, Maudlin is currently trying to um, like essentially replace any bed like beds that are in rooms that are suitable for double beds with double beds, which is mad. We've got so many. Um, yeah. I so, <coughs> that's insane. I literally couldn't imagine a uni room with a double bed. That just seems like so crazy. That's so nice. Yeah, not, <laughs> I've got to admit, like, yeah, it is. It is kind of a like strange thing to just randomly have a double bed popped in your room but like the really good thing is is like college was like well if if you like don't actually have any bedding that's double bed because like you were expecting a single bed that's fine we will just supply you bedding until you can buy some which is quite nice yeah god that's really nice it seems like they have a lot of provisions there to help students which is like obviously super important and i know you said that like you felt a bit like um 
the transition was difficult for you initially um, when you came to uni. So what did college have in place to help people with that transition? Yeah, so I think the, the social atmosphere helps a lot. Um, so like there, there's, there's no, well, there, there isn't much stigma um, in like talking about stuff with like people at Moreland, which I think is quite nice. Like, so um, on the JCR side, which is basically like the student like union-esque thing, um, basically the people who represent um, the students of the college, um, you've got welfare reps um, who are like essentially there to make sure that you're doing okay um, and like running like random like welfare kind of things and like getting do, doing events to kind of like get people out and about if you know what I mean like get the people who are I don't know like may have a bit more like social anxiety or that kind of thing which I definitely suffer from um, which is fair um, just out and about and like I don't know just mingling with everyone um, on top of that, there's um, liberation roles as well. Um, so there, there's everything from like um, LGBT, uh, BME, women's. Um, there's also a class act officer, kind of. It's basically, the access officer at Maudlin also represents class act officers. Um, okay. uh, people, sorry. Um, and yeah, essentially, like the the, the way that like, that works is like representing the people who are, have had like some kind of like socioeconomic disadvantage at some point. So like you you really do feel like you fit in a lot i think um yeah there, there's a lot of support available on like the the student like community side of things and like on top of that so um there's the uh, so in cambridge the way that it works is you get assigned um both a tutor and a director of studies the tutor is essentially the person that's involved in like making sure that your brain is okay and like you are you're basically like just doing okay on the welfare side of things and they're like the first point of contact if things aren't quite all right um and then they can like refer you like uh, to like college counselors or that kind of thing which is is really good there's a lot of like support on that end um and our college nurse is amazing uh taryn um she she's great um yeah but basically like there, there's a lot of a lot of layers of support i think um and like sometimes it is difficult like kind of assessing which one you need but like I, I think there's going to be a bit, bit more work in like kind of creating like a flow chart if you get what I mean i.e I have x problem what do I go to um something that we're working on for next year that's really good and like I mean like you've just explained here it seems like college are always trying to find more ways to make things easier for students and if they need help to let them know like exactly where they need to go to get it and yeah that mm. seems really really important um, and so then I suppose you spent all your first year in that really, really nice room. And then did you upgrade or downgrade for the second year? So I kind of, so it's weird. So like actually in terms of like the rent, I, I downgraded um, in terms of like how much I was paying for it. But like my, my room in second year was really nice as well. Um, I, I was in like a really big room um, with like a bay window and I started off with a double bed and like within a couple of weeks it got replaced to a, uh, sorry, I started off with a single bed um, and within a couple of weeks it got replaced to a double bed, weird. Um, and like, yeah, it was, it was older, um, so it wasn't quite the same like modern-esque vibe that um, my first year room had, but yeah, it, it was, it was quite a nice atmosphere and like I was living with all my friends as well, so can't really argue on that front. Um, it was, it was very much like a house vibe um so as opposed to like university dorm thing where you're kind of like i don't know like separate from everyone else a little bit um <clears throat> my, my second year room was basically just like a house with like seven people which is mad um and like yeah it, it was it, even though it kind of had like an, a slightly oldie vibe um it, it still had like I don't know, you, you, you kind of got, got the like feeling like people were always around you, if you get what I mean. Like, yeah, like <clears throat> my room definitely had, I don't know, just a nice atmosphere to it, I think. That's really, really nice. And what band was that room? Um, I, I'd have to double check, but I think it was a band C room. So oh, okay. the way that um, Maudlin works is it's um, A to I. Um, so A being the most expensive and I being the least. So it was kind of like, middle to top um end of things um i've actually had quite a like different range of um rooms across Maudland because the summer following first year i actually lived in uh, thompson's lane which is um but basically like kind of an offshoot it's a little bit off site but it's, it's still 
like technically on site it's quite close it's literally just down the road um and yeah it, that, that was that was kind of strange because it was like it was again this kind of like house vibe um and like you, you kind of know everyone um and so but ju just for clarification like I, I stayed in cambridge over the summer of my first year to do internship and various accessing things um and yeah the, the room was it was a bit smaller than uh, my first year room which was uh, like a, a little bit like to get used to but it was I, I i managed to make it mine which was quite nice which to do over like the course of a summer is quite a task i think yeah um, months but like yeah i i kind of do miss that room even though like the room that i'm um in now is actually amazing the room i was in second year was really good like i don't know i, I just kind of miss some of like the sentimentality as well behind the like that room if you know what i mean um so so going into um like my third year um I, I actually have got a room in Benton O, which um is an ensuite set it's mad um, yeah, i heard that was the best accommodation like Benton O is like like high it's like good good stuff it, it's pretty good um like i think i've got i've got three three windows one of them is bay window um and like i've got like a set which is spread across two, like it's it's actually really so good um and so the, the thing is I actually got this um, on uh, like disability reservation as well, because this is kind of like the kind of room that I needed. Um, basically, I just went to college and was like, I, I, I need like, like a, a pretty decent room. Is there anything you can do? Um, and they were like, yeah, this is fine. Um, we, we can just stick you in one of these. Um, is really nice. Um, Modeling is really good for that kind of like, um, like adjustments and that kind of thing. Um, but that being said, even some of the like lower end band, uh, like band rooms are like even though they're cheaper and yes they're a bit smaller and you like share facilities with more people, they they still kind of have that like homely vibe. I think that's that's one thing that's kind of like common across literally all of Maudlin, like pretty much all the accommodation because either it's like you're living with a, like just a bunch of people and you kind of get like that community feel. Um, it doesn't really matter whether it's really modern or like really old you, you still get that kind of like i don't know that kind of like homely vibe if that makes sense yeah because i i mean i read online that like so there is a range of accommodation in um maudlin which i guess is true but um that some of it isn't very nice so i talked to emma from maudlin and um yeah. she said that actually like people tend to love their rooms no matter where they are and she mentioned the building you were in actually um over summer and she said that some of the showers can be dodgy and things like that what was your experience mm. there um so yeah so thompson's like so i was kind of in like a mini offshoot of thompson's lane so it wasn't like the big main like bit so thompson's lane is split up into like i think three houses i'd have to double check okay. that one of which is like really really big and then there's a couple of like two really small ones and so i was in one of the small ones um and like to be fair the facilities in there were okay um and i think to be honest like if you've got a problem with something, you literally just get in contact with maintenance. So like, hi, can you please deal with this? And they will. Um, it may take them a couple of weeks to get to it, but it's like, they, they, they do tend to like listen to those kind of concerns and that kind of thing. Um, like the, the facilities in um, where I was was actually quite good because I actually had an oven, um, which is kind of rare in um, Oxbridge. Um, like, uh, because like mo most colleges, tend to prefer you to just have like normal kitchens um like with like a hob and a microwave and like a toaster and that kind of thing just to encourage you to eat in like hall or buttery um but where i was living over the summer um actually had an oven in it and it was it was mad it was crazy <laughs> yeah it's so good good baking <laughs> i suppose like when you're at home you take an oven for granted and then you get to uni and you don't have one you're like i can't cook this that like ah oh. so to have one is something nice really really mad thing that i found recently um so where, where i've moved into now like because because of lockdown i've been like going slightly stir crazy and making lots of food um i found that the combination microwave um that i've got in my accommodation can actually cook uh, like um sorry cook pizza which is yeah i know um oh mad um I, I'm kind of sad that I didn't realize this in first year because yeah. like 
I'm pretty sure that most of the microwaves, if not all, that Maudlin supply um, have uh, basically a combination ones. Or like, if it's not combination, you can kind of be like, hi, can I have a combination one? And they'll just like stick one in because I needed to replace them. Um, and yes, yeah, like I'm kind of sad that I didn't realize this in first year because I've, I've missed out on a lot of Sainsbury's pizzas. <laughs> The, tr the tragedy of that, honestly, says his pizzas are the one. <laughs> no, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to check my um, microwave when I go back to uni because I haven't got an oven. I've just got like a special microwave. I don't know. Um, hopefully that'll cook pizzas because... Yeah, if it's I'll a combi one, that. definitely try it. Yeah, de I will definitely have to check that one out. <laughs> and then I guess food in general is so, so important in college, especially for me, who is a greedy girl and just food is everything. <laughs> so um, <laughs> what is it like at Maudlin? Yeah, so um, we've got the buttery, um, which is up in Crips Court. Um, I can't remember the exact prices, but like they they tend to serve like breakfast, um, lunch, and dinner. Um, and like the the food can vary between like yeah, this is okay to like really good. Um, they, they, like it's kind of rare for like like dodgy food to come out, um, but like for the amount of money that you're paying for it, it's not bad. Um, and the desserts at Maudlin. They're so good. Um, personal favourite. Uh, they, they do like really, really nice cakes. Um, but yeah, so like buttery, to be honest, like because it's like kind of a like middle to like kind of like can be good vibe. Um, it's it's more kind of for the social atmosphere, I think. Um, yeah. But one of the best things that like you can do in fresh is it's something that I would do is just like go to the buttery and sit with some random people and talk, um, which it's unnatural for a lot of people um admittedly it was unnatural for me but like it's it's a really nice way to meet people and like it's it's where i actually like solidified um some of the, the connections with my now college family which was quite nice um yeah can't argue um in terms of formal modeling can again be it's it's kind of like middle to really good um like I, I think that occasionally they try and like randomly experiment with some things. Um, okay. I, remember, um, I was talking to um, some people and like for one of their like early dinners in first year, um, the year above me this was, um, like the dessert was basil cake. Rogue. <laughs> yeah, I heard that as well about basil cake being a, a pudding. I was like, it's so <laughs> random. It's so random. This is the thing, like, I, I mean, I kind of feel this from like my own like cooking escapades um like cause I, I tend to experiment with food quite a lot and like it's it can either go really really well or it's like this is an, an, uh, an unholy creation why does this just exist <laughs> um yeah like so more modeling formals on average are quite good so we do um we have a formal like every night of term pretty much with like the odd exception here and there um which just just for like disclaimer that that means that we can book onto any formal any night term as opposed to like you have to go to formal every night term because that, that would be atrocious um like i think i think modeling formals are a really nice vibe um because we're in kind of like a small like kind of intimate hall um i think there's like the maximum seats that you can get for undergrads is about like 80 seats and then the oh. fellow um so like you you, you kind of like it's it's this very like tight knit feel if you know what I mean like it's completely candlelit as well so it's it's a very like vibey atmosphere. What's the best? Give me the menu of the best formal you've ever had. At Maudlin, has to be at Maudlin. <laughs> that's a difficult one. So I think I think one of the best ones that I had was um, actually a natural sciences dinner. So it occasionally like um so societies and that kind of thing can um put on essentially like a separate dinner and so like some sometimes like subjects will have like a dinner um and so they've got like kind of like a special reserved menu for these kind of things um yeah. and oh, i'm trying to remember the actual um the actual menu itself but I, I think it was some kind of like a like smoky prawn starter um which was so good i love prawns that, yeah uh, sounds good <laughs> Um, and then I think it was, I think it was like steak with some kind of like fancy sauce. It, it was, yeah, it was good. And then I think it was like a, I think it was like a chocolate key, cheesecake dessert. It was nice. Um, like, Sounds gorgeous though. Sounds really good. Like, I think, I think that like, it kind of, it kind of ranges between 
that kind of thing where you're like, oh, this is really nice, um, to like, yeah, that this like this is worth the amount of money I'm paying for it because like more than formals are really cheap. It's I can't remember the exact number, but it's it's like below eight pound, which is ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's like, so good. Really affordable, and like I think the I think the amount of like Cambridge students that have takeouts is ridiculously low, just because of like how a good and b affordable the formals tend to be. That's so so good, and I mean, less than eight pound for formal is literally insane for a three course meal. I f I feel like people would, like forget that it's like three, like and decent ish most of the time of courses. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, insane, so good. And then you said that you love maudlin puddings. So can you give me a few of your favourites that are like day to day puddings? Oh, so um, from the buttery, one thing that they um do is like this like rainbow cake. Uh, oh, sweetest thing you'll ever taste. Um. But like I, I'm, I'm a sucker for sweet stuff, so can't argue. Um, that that's quite nice. I think another one that they do quite well is uh, chocolate cheesecake. Um, like I, I don't know, I'm I'm really like a fan of like you know like the shortbread um, crust and that kind of thing. Like they they just get that bang on. Um, I'm trying to think, what are the decent? One of the things that I I kind of either love or hate depending on my mood is they, they do like a chocolate mint cake as well which is it can be really nice but only if you're feeling in the mood for mint i think yeah that sounds interesting chocolate mint cake i've never even had a chocolate mint cake <laughs> yeah i to be honest it's it's a strange experience i'm gonna, <laughs> gonna be honest with you yeah it sounds interesting but it sounds quite nice and then mm. can you give me like a typical example menu in the day of maudlin so like typical breakfast lunch and dinner yeah so um normal breakfast would just kind of be they, they kind of go along the like waffly like kind of route like kind of like continental breakfast so like there's lots of pastries um but like yogurts and like sandwiches on hand um i don't think what else they have yeah i think i think that's kind of like the the main kind of stuff uh, i'm worried about like getting it mixed up with brunch which is a completely separate thing um so you, you for lunch like it can be kind of rogue kind of stuff um a lot of, sort of like kind of things like they can do curries um and like like a vegetarian version they they're a massive fan of quinoa which if you love quinoa is good if you don't love quinoa it's like ah oh no <laughs> um <laughs> the vegetarian end. um and for, for dinner, like, it'll kind of be, like, a similar, slightly, like, more heavy version of lunch, um, usually. So, like, again, go, like, kind of her, uh, heavy on the curries. Occasionally, they do, like, fish and chips, which is nice. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that was probably, like, typical-esque. Um, if we went for brunch, though, which is honestly my favourite meal, uh, Maudlin does brunch on Saturdays and Sundays, which is great. Um, it's just basically like an English fryer um like an english breakfast that kind of thing and oh, it's so good um yeah i i think that like so you get like sausages hash browns um egg mushrooms bacon oh, it's just so good and like again really cheap for what it is i think you pay per item for brunch as well so like it's yeah it's nice yeah i, I mean same in um somerville um brunch is the highlight of the week honestly mm. oh just the best thing ever a full cup breakfast because nobody's gonna well people do but i guess i definitely wouldn't sit in the kitchen and do all the different components of an english breakfast for myself so it's yeah, just absolutely. yeah it just would never happen especially uni so then like to just go to hall and just pick up exactly what you want um yeah all the buttery for you but yeah it's such a dream honestly jcr mm. what is your jcr like do you mean the room or the committee <laughs> Yeah, actually, I should have distinguished. I mean the room. <laughs> so our room is, I think there's plans to renovate at the moment. It's it's, it's kind of homely. Um, some of the furniture needs replacing, but we've got access to, like, um, Sky, a PS4. Um, and, like, people tend to go in there for, like, like meetups and that kind of thing. So, like, for example, like, if you go into a formal or something, you'll meet up in the JCR beforehand. Um, yeah, like, it, it, it could use with some work, and I think the college is, like, moving in that direction um but like it is it is still kind of like a homely atmosphere and it, it gets like it does get a lot of use like around i think like lent term so uh, in cambridge lent is our second term um and like that's when people tend to go like full ham on like society dinners and that kind of thing um yeah. 
and I think that's pretty much like mostly when it gets used. Okay, yeah, it's similar similar to like our college with um like JC hasn't used as much, um, but like it is like a social space for people who do want to use it and for like special events and stuff, yeah. Um and then I heard from Emma that you guys you have the college bar and it is used a bit, but like the main social hub of the college is in the pick, the pub. Yes, yeah. yeah. So our college bar is it's nice and it's actually had a renovation recently and the drinks are fairly cheap um and we've got access to like a wii and random board games it's strange but um i think usually like the bar tends to be like a starter for a night if you know what i mean so like yeah. you've come formal and you head into the college bar for a little bit and then you'll go to the pick um so like i'm, I'm not exactly sure of um what it is but i think that maudlin owns the pick building um and, like bar like what's the names in there and like there's there's like pictures of um like more than students gone by um in there which is quite homely um yeah the, the pick is quite a nice atmosphere i think um it's it's pretty much like the first stop for like a, any more than students wanting to go to, for a pub because it's so close like mm. you walk like two minutes up the road and it's right there um yeah it's it's got it's got quite a nice like vibe and um i think it's got like a fairly decent history as well um yeah it is it is a really nice atmosphere like a lot of um like post formal um kind of things have ended up there um so like when i i remember for example like post uh like anansky formal we we ended up in in the pick until like closing time um just like chatting away about like random obscure stuff um <laughs> and like it just kind of like bit, like a big group of people were breaking up into loads of like random like out there conversations it, it, it was it's really nice yeah oh yeah that sounds like a really nice um thing i just think a social hub for the college is so so important and i just think it's really cool that you're just like in a pub that's like like related to the college but it's not like you know typical place for college students to, yeah tango if you know what i mean like it's different to other colleges yeah. i think that's really really cool to know um and then also a huge thing about maudlin is that it's the only white compulsory white tie ball right yes yes it is um i'm not sure what the like what this is going to be going forward because there's been a couple of like questions about like whether this is feasible going forward but yeah so maudlin is the only white tie ball in cambridge like compulsory and my may ball in first year was actually amazing um so I had, like I, I remember like that there was just so much good food on like um on, on like pan um like I actually uh, for example, like so, bao buns. Um, have, have you ever come across them? No. Chinese steamed buns. They are the best thing ever, honestly. Ooh. And like, bit of barbecue pork in the middle. Oh, honestly, amazing. Um, def definitely look it up on Google. <laughs> I will definitely. Um, and like, there was a bunch of things. So like, there, there was really like kind of like posh things here and there, which like coming from like not really a posh background was kind of funny to just experience. Like. We had like um like wine tastings that kind of thing and like um uh, that there was like random like state snake handling things as well like so that there was like a snake charmer that would come around and literally just like it, it was mad um and like lots of like really good music throughout as well um so like there was the, i think there was like a jazz band in the master's garden um and like in first court there was a couple of like really big acts um like, yeah just it it was a really nice experience, I think. And like I think the longest that I've ever actually stayed up. What time were you up till? I was up until half nine in the morning. Um, oh, just... I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah. I was at like three AM. Yeah. Nine AM. <laughs> so the Mayball actually goes from seven PM to seven AM. Um oh. and then post Mayball we just kind of uh, like me and my friends just ended up doing some random things. Um you just end up having like a walk around Cambridge. It was quite nice. Um, oh. But yeah, like uh, one big thing is like um, getting to survivors. So like at the end of the May ball, there's the survivors photo. Um, so basically anyone who's managed to stay awake slash conscious by the end of the May ball, um, basically just gather at the front of Maudlin and like this this uh, big picture is like taken of everyone. And I've, I've still got my survivors photo. It's, it was really nice. It, it's just like, I think I think Maudlin is one of the more tame Mayballs, I think. Um it's 
it's more like you're you're there to enjoy yourself rather than like this is a big party all the time if that makes sense yeah uh, that's nice. which like to be fair I, th I think with most maples there is there is an element of like party slash like i don't know chill atmosphere but i think that maudlin's is more skewed towards like the this is just actually a really nice experience if you know what i mean yeah definitely i mean I've, i think that's a nice way to have it as well because if it is more of like a party crazy vibe then you might drink more and then if you drink too much you've forgotten the night and then you've paid so much money to come to the ball and then you know you're either exactly. got a head down the toilet or you just can't remember it so yeah definitely i think that's so so important um and what was the highlight of the may ball for you oh hmm that's actually a really big i think i think it was the i can't actually remember what the main act was off the top of my head i, I can get back to you on that but it, it was the main act, um, just basically like everyone was on the dance floor. It was just like, it was it was pretty like, it was kind of a weird like chill vibe, but really energetic, if that makes sense. Um, I think, it, to be fair, it's either that or basically just like sitting in um, the master's garden, just chatting with friends and like um, having something to eat and drink. It, it, it Just like with that, uh, jazz in the background. It was, it was quite nice. I think... I think that probably like sums up the two ends of Maudlin Maple. Um, kind of like the chill, laid back atmosphere with like, yes, this is fancy, but also I'm devouring so much cheese. This doesn't make sense being in like a <laughs> <laughs> time. Um, and then like the, the classic, like, I don't know, it's just all going on, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, yeah, it was similar with our ball as well. Like, if you wanted to go really hard, you, like, really could. And if you didn't, you didn't have to. And if you wanted bits of both, you couldn't. I think that's, yeah, it's a great way to have the ball. Um, yeah, so another really fun event in college is bops. So, um, yeah, so what's your bop highlight? What's the, like, favourite bop memory? Oh, I think, I think Michaelmas of my first year. So Michaelmas is uh, first term. Um, so th this was before I was on the JCR and having to like set up bops, which sad. Um, basically, I, I went to um, the bop with my college family. Um, I think it was the uh, second bop of Michaelmas term. So Maudlin has two bops a term typically, um, and yeah, they're they're kind of so it's it, I think it's it's usually like five pounds for entry and like free drinks throughout, and like you can have pretty much as as much or as little as you want. Um, Good music, like a text wall and that kind of thing. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, M Michaelmas, the second bop in Michaelmas was my my favourite. Um, just pretty much because, like, I I went with my college family, um, and like, I don't know, I just really got into it. If you know what I mean, like, I'm not really a big like going out type. Like, I do here and there, but it's mm -hmm. it's not really, like something I'll do every like every week and that kind of thing. It's, like some people might do, um, but. I, I don't know, I just really got into it and I really, really enjoyed it. And like, it was this really like wholesome vibe again, even though it was like, obviously like big party atmosphere because it's bop. Um, I don't know, it's just like I was with all my friends and I was really enjoying myself. And yeah, it, it was just a really fun experience, if I'm honest. Oh, no, that's really, really nice. I think bops are just like a, such a fun time to let your hair down and have a bit of fun and not think about mm -hmm. all the work you've got to do. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this, is the, this is a really good thing about modern bops. So we tend to have one towards the start and end of every term. Um, and with, with the exception of exam term, obviously. Um, yeah. And it's just like, it's the kind of like, we're back, if that makes sense. And we're going, if you're not like, it's just kind of like a celebration either way. And it always feels like a celebration. Um, like, as opposed to, yes, we are doing this because we are stressed. <laughs> no, that's, that's a nice way to do it. Yeah. And like, same, similar, similarly at Somerville, we always have bops like the day of, like after the last set of collections. So like mock exams have been done. Mm. And it's such a nice, such a, such a nice way to like celebrate being back together, ready for term, but also like celebrate collections being over because people can get quite stressed about them. So yeah, I think it's just a really fun thing. No, yeah. exactly, I agree. Yeah. And what's your favorite Bob costume that you've ever seen? Oh, ever seen or ever worn? Oh, I do both. I'd love to know both. <laughs> So, ever seen, um, there was there was a bop where someone just ch turned up in an apron. An apron, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. 
Um, oh, and... no, no trout, no like boxes or anything. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that, that was slightly out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, though to be fair, I think like I remember seeing someone come in. Um, oh, what was it? That like there was there was a period like one buff where someone was just passing around a bucket hat. I know it's not really costume, but like it just became a thing where the bucket hat it was really weird. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like that. I think I think a favorite one I've ever worn. Um, oh, I have like a really big like backstory. Um, yeah, so basically I decided um, that I was just gonna. It was it was it was pretty weird. Okay, it, this was like the most out there thing. Um, I I showed up to Boff being like some kind of like a I don't know a tree hunter like an evil tree had killed my brother and I was going to take revenge that kind of thing um, and like I ended up coming dressed in my gown of all things to a Boff uh, which I feel like is just kind of like I feel like that just kind of sums up Cambridge quite a lot like there, there's this really like fancy atmosphere but like I think wearing wearing a gown to bop is just a statement and like i ended up having like um this like yarn around me with like um just a, a bunch of like random leaves and that kind of thing <laughs> it was it was like honestly the weirdest bop costume i've ever worn like so the theme was into the forest so it was it was vaguely like related um okay, yeah but yeah that, i'll that give was... you that a bit more <laughs> we definitely needed that context alex just that yeah, I went as a tree hunter is, is, was not enough. <laughs> Surprise, it's going back to high school vibe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that sounds really cool. And I like that you put effort into the costumes, honestly. Some people don't, yeah. some people do. I love people who do, personally. I think it's good. This is the thing. I think that, like, um, at least from my experience, like, it's either you people put literally no effort in and just come in normal like random like party party esque um clothes or they go full ham um and there's not really much of an in between that I've seen <laughs> no yeah i think that is just the yeah i think that's just the case in most colleges and it's just mm. so much fun honestly bops are just like a really great thing to have in college i think um no, I love bops. and yeah i guess another social thing within college um because you know you can't have it all work, work otherwise you will just you know lose it yeah. um so um societies um so they're really really important what sort of societies are you involved in in college so in college um i'm involved in a couple one of the first societies i got involved in um was at the time mag ladies which was modeling college feminist society um it's now the 1988 club because uh, people thought that like mag ladies might be a bit exclusive meaning that like men couldn't join when they could and that kind of thing um I'm, I'm pretty sure emma's talked a little bit about this um yeah she talked a little bit about it yeah but i'm i'm the speakers officer for um 980 club at the moment so like oh, i wow. talks and that kind of thing um and yeah it's it's just kind of nice like one of the things that i organized in my first year because I've, I've been speakers officer for i think two years now about two years um and what one of the first things that I organized was um, like women in STEM panel. Um, got a lot of really inspirational women from like across the university, completely different fields, um, including um, the, the person that pretty much made me want to apply to Cambridge, which was actually mad. Who? Um, Who is this? Uh, Sarah Caddy. Um, she, she came and did, um, she came and did like an access talk. Um, like, I think it was when I was, at the end of year 11 um so she and a couple of people from uh, modeling came down to north wales um and just basically like did a little chat um about like this is like applications this is the kind of stuff you can study this is what like my personal story um and it really inspired me to kind of go along that route um i was really mad to like then get in contact with her from the student side and be like hi do you fancy like coming and speaking at this event about like some some of your story because like I mean I was inspired by that and may as well be put to like an audience of people um yeah it was really good and I actually chatted to her quite a bit um at the formal afterwards um so like we, we take the speakers to formal usually as well um yeah it was just it was quite nice I think um yeah we we do a lot of like discussion groups and that kind of thing um and like trying to get over like some of the like normal like stigmas and that kind of thing that you, you tend to get a lot in like pretty much everywhere um yeah. i think like addressing those kind of things and 
actually like working against them is really important and I, I think that like that's something that um like, you know a club does quite well um on top of that um i've gotten a little bit involved with um the blackett society which is the uh, society for um, natural scientists at Magdalen. Uh, it's it's basically the stem society really um so like it isn't like really exclusive to natural sciences i like anyone who does a science can get involved but like it's typically been more catered towards um people who do uh, natural sciences um i'm actually the co-president of that now which is mad um and yeah we're, we're looking at organizing some some talks um just like kind of like uh, intersectionality in stem and that kind of thing which i think would be quite good um and so like Maudlin has, um, even though I haven't managed to attend it yet, and I, I do need to, um, an undergraduate symposium um, from the Blackett Society. So essentially people, postgrad, undergrad, um, either way, basically come in and present some kind of project that they've worked on. Um, oh, wow. It's, it's usually after the summer. Um, so like if, if people have got like vaguely like science -y internships of the summer, they come in and just present what they've done. Um, and it's like, it's really cool because you get to see what people have been up to over the summer, maybe gain some inspiration to like do something similar. And also for the people getting involved, it gives you like, like a presenting experience and like talking academically, like to an audience, which I think is quite good. Like it's seen pretty good uptake as well, which is quite nice. Um, that's pretty much like the, the most stuff I've, I've gotten involved in on, um, on like the, the college end of societies. I have actually set up a couple of societies, which I'm, I, I, I still need to get off the ground. Um, there's um, Magdalen College Welsh Society, which should be really good when I actually finally manage to get it going. Yeah, nice. It, it, we're basically, because there's a, a fair amount of Welsh people at Magdalen, um, it, it's just nice to have that little community because yeah. the link area for Magdalen is North Wales and Merseyside. So like we, we do tend to, get like slightly more Welsh applicants than a lot of colleges which can't argue um and like on top of that as well um out there at Magdalen Film Society essentially so Magdalen has got um Crips or um which is basically like the, the only way to describe it is imagine a mix between a movie theatre and a lecture theatre basically that um, and like a really decent quality projector. And so the really cool thing is you can actually rent out, well, not rent out, but like you can book Crips Auditorium as a society, um, just pretty much do whatever you want. So for example, the Women in STEM panel and like the undergraduate symposium were both hosted in there. Um, but I, I saw a little like flaw in the what's name of this and I realized we've basically got a personal movie theater Hmm, maybe we should start a movie society and just like watch like trash movies. <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, that's something that I'm planning on like getting off the ground once like coronavirus means that we can book it again. Um, yeah. But yeah, like well, one thing that I, I quite like is just like there's not really any barriers to you setting that kind of thing up. Um, like if you get a couple of people who are interested and you want to set up a society, do it <laughs> yeah i think that's really really good is that like you can tailor things to your interest so if there's stuff that's already there that interests you like join it but if you don't like create your own society like people are more than happy to do it and you can apply for funding from like the jcr as well from the actual mm. committee this time um like to help set up if you need any funding and things so people can vote on whether you know they want to give you money and things but yeah it's so open to like whatever you want to do and it sounds like you're very involved in lots of modeling aspects of life which is like really cool and really fun um and yeah i suppose um my last question for about modeling is <laughs> it's actually not really about modeling but um if you could have applied to any other college in cambridge if modeling didn't exist where would you have applied to i think queens okay how come the way that like the vibe that i've always gotten from queens is it's basically a bigger version of modeling um okay. so the reason why i went for modeling was it's on the river and really really big community atmosphere and like from from what i've heard about queens like it's it's quite similar i mean obviously it's right smack bang on the river um good accommodation and like there's that community atmosphere again um yeah and to be fair like uh, for <laughs> completely out there as well like 
it kind of helps a little bit that um, one of my favourite bands just happened to like perform in their old hall, which was mad. Who? Hey. Bastille. Yeah. What, just for the fun of it, or was it for an event? I'm not entirely sure. Um, so they did a, a recording of um, Things We Lost in the Fire that was like with the Cambridge University Chamber Orchestra there. It's on YouTube if you want to look oh, it up. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's super, super cool. That's really cool. Yeah, well, I can understand why you don't have like to Queens, you know? And like, <laughs> as an <laughs> modeling, it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, and I've seen um, pictures of Queens on the internet and it looks really, really pretty. Um, yeah, it's nice really nice. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's great. It's been so nice to talk to you about Maudlin. Um, it really does sound like an incredible, credible college. Um, yeah. So yeah, well, end of this here. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.